young man. Was a city selection all city, team captain, 1970. Uh, offensive tackle, dominant defensive tackle, punted, kicked. Uh, when he first came in, spoke no English at all, just like his cousin. And uh, used to talk to him, because I didn't talk Italian, I used sign language. <laughs> and he told me this, and so this is how we talk. But we go back a long time with this young man, and it's ironic because my wife had three children at the time, were little, and he had a visit to Rhode Island University. But his parents spoke no English, so we had our little station wagon. We picked up this young man. We had the three kids in the back with the player. And we went up to Rhode Island. And uh, Vinny Sinagra met the coach, got a full scholarship, met his wife up there, I think that weekend, Vinny? No, met, met, met his wife up there. And at that point, the one setback when we left, the head coach offered me the job for the freshman job. But I thought I'm too busy at the Utrecht, it's too bad. So at this point, this is someone that I have stayed in touch with, or we have stayed in touch with forever. And uh, uh, it, it's a great thing because uh, I love him just like I love my players. It's always great to hear from them. Just like my present players that I'm in touch with almost every week of life. So I'm very, very proud to present a Hall of Fame induction to Vinny Sinatra. kids who later on become parents, grandparents, and to see how their lives has changed, how they changed my life. But there's always moments in your life and steps that come in your life that there's certain people that touch you in different ways. This place, Utrecht, was our place. I was 303 pounds, a freshman. I had uh, you know, man boobs out of here. I got half my block, okay? And, and I just said this uh, to Jerry Gibalero. I was on a podcast two weeks ago, one of my former players in California. And they asked me, how'd you get started? And I said, there were two guys in my neighborhood, Philly Cats and Jerry Gibalero, that saw me riding a delivery bike, you know, bouncing all over the place, sitting in cars because I didn't know how to drive that big freaking basket. And they said, hey, the Utrecht's having tryouts. Why don't you come and play? I said, shit, that sounds like a lot of work, right? <laughs> that was a lot of work. Ah, yeah. So this place gave me my life. And there's a lot of people in this room responsible for where I am today and what I was able to achieve. And they're not, I'm telling you, they're not, they weren't always great days. I remember coaching at Stony Brook. We won a championship. And they gave us our championship rings that we, that we got fired because the head coach retired, so we had to go. So you win a championship, it doesn't make a difference. You know, shit happens, right? So, but with all that stuff that, that goes up and down, and the one thing that kept me focused was this place and the guys I played with. And... Yeah, baby. 